Did you know that Bishop Michael V. Kelsey and the New Samaritan Mass Choir are recording artists? This moment in history gives you a brief look into their recordings. Their inaugural CD, I'll Sing to You, was recorded live at New Samaritan and featured a fascinating smattering of gospel artists to complement the strong stylings of Bishop Michael V. Kelsey Sr. Dr. Carla Bowens collaborated with both Isaiah D. Thomas and the late Michael Robinson on its production, and Bishop Kelsey contributed to many selections throughout the CD. Guest artists and songwriters included Bishop Paul S. Morton, featured on Come to Jesus Now, Doug and Melvin Williams, I've Been Blessed. Bishop Guy Robinson wrote the song, There is Power in the Name, and others. On special note on the project is the hymn, Lift Him Up, which features the songwriting and keyboard genius of Michael Robinson. The familiar lyrics unfolded into a musical setting that has elements of both a classical arrangement and freestyle gospel improvisation. A second CD was recorded in 2004 entitled Masterpiece, which included the hit songs Run and Tell That and Great Jehovah God. The CD was also nominated for a stellar award, gospel music's highest honor, following its release. The musical mastery of both CDs was accomplished through other songwriters and musicians, such as Morette Brown Clark, Minister Marvin McCoy, Darlene Simmons of Richard Smallwood and Vision, Myrna Summers, as well as New Samaritan talents, Michael E. Scott, Clinton Truesdale, Gerald Scott, Tia Harris Lee, Reginald Hurt, Trinita Lattimore, Brian Boddy, and the voices of the Mass Choir. Samaritan family and guests. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. For our God is great, he's great, and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Good morning, Holy Father, our God. We greet you in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus, with grateful hearts and thanksgiving. 
we stand in awe of being in your presence and we thank you for the blood of the resurrected Christ and the power of your spirit that make it possible. Thank you, Father, for fresh grace and mercy that allows us to worship on this Sabbath Sunday. We give you thanks. Please, God, cleanse our hands, purify our hearts, and receive our prayer. But before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for everything that you have already done. You forgave us and saved us, delivered us and kept us, protect us and provide everything that we need. You speak to us and you hear us. You lovingly draw us to you and you embrace us. You are simply amazing. We thank you, Father, for the vision and the labor of Bishop and Elder Kelsey who lead and cover us to live full and to embrace the rhythms of life. Bless them and the New Samaritan family mightily as we rest and return for a greater work. Now, Holy Spirit, we ask that you are arrest and all distractions and prepare our hearts to receive your word. Stand strong in Dr. Brenda Woods as she breaks the bread of life. Give us ears to hear, to trust, and to obey. Now elevate our gratitude and empower our praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus is our prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's join our worshipers. Good morning, New Samaritan. We're going to lift up the name of God this morning. Amen. We're going to give God some glory this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We worship him in spirit and in truth, and we will show him that this morning. Come on. Sing along with us. Come on. Feels 
like heaven on earth sick. Some things move, some things change. See his glory feels like some things move, some things move, some things change. See his glory feels like heaven on earth. Some things move, some things change. See his glory feels like heaven on earth. There is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sounds of many waters, heaven on earth, say lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sounds of many waters, heaven on earth, there is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sounds of many waters, heaven on earth. Sounds of many waters, heaven on earth. Oh, oh, oh. I want to see heaven, heaven on earth. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah, God. We're so grateful for all that you've done in our lives. Times you heal me. So many doors. 
better than good to me. So many doors, so many doors you opened, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. Been better than good to me. You've 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 been better than good to me. Better than good to me. You've been so good. You've been so good, yeah. You've been so What a joy it is to lift up the Lord this morning in praise and worship. Today, our in-person worship service is on Sabbath rest, and we are still excited to worship together virtually. We are thankful for our visiting guests who chose to worship with us today. We would love to know who you are and have a chance to greet you. Please follow the instructions on the bottom of the screen, text NSBC guest to 202 428 0599. That's NSBC guest to 202 428 0599. God bless you, and we trust that you will have a rich experience of worship with us today. Good morning, and welcome to our worship service. Today, Join the Evangelism Ministry at Central Union Mission at 7 p.m. for their worship service. Elder Christopher Boggs is the preacher of the evening, and the residents really look forward to us sharing this worship experience with them. Thank you to everyone who donated to the Missionary Ministry's annual Back to School Drive. Your donations of school supplies, backpacks, and financial contributions will benefit J.O. Wilson Elementary School, the Wheatley Education Campus, and the Center City Public Charter School. Why are we so trapped in the natural? Amen. Why, why are we so shallow, amen, by uh, maintaining a relationship that is a physical relationship with God and not a spiritual relationship? We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. from the crowd and their demand and found quiet time with the Father. Women's Day 2023 is September 24th and the theme is changed. The Women's Day attire is all white with a lap scarf of any solid color. Apostle Tracy Troy from Victory in Jesus Ministries in Whiteville, North Carolina, is our dynamic guest speaker, and we will start our Women's Day celebration with a powerful scripture walk through the sanctuary at 9.30 a.m. This year, 
we need 130 women or men to give a $100 assessment to help us meet our Women's Day goal and support the missions of New Samaritan. You may begin paying your assessment now through any of our giving options. Women, you are being called upon to join the Women's Day Choir. Our First Lady, Elder Sheila Boynes Kelsey, and her sister, Dr. Carla Boynes, will be our choir directors. The goal is to have a 50-voice choir, and you are needed to make it happen. Stay tuned for rehearsal dates and times as we get excited about Women's Day 2023. It will be an amazing time of worship. Home ownership is a valuable investment tool, and on September 30th, our Young Adult Ministry is presenting a free home buyer seminar designed to educate, equip, and prepare you for home ownership. Meet realtors and other persons in the know in our fellowship hall at 11 a.m. and learn the preparation and process of buying a home. You will also learn about various programs to assist you with down payment and closing costs. This seminar is for everyone interested in learning information on home buying. Come out and take advantage of this free opportunity to learn more about how you can begin the journey to home ownership. October 1st has been designated Compassion Sunday for the Full Gospel Fellowship this year. It will be a very special day as our church prepares to bless children and families around the world with a spiritual adoption. More information will be shared with you on how you may join in this endeavor soon. Just be sure to mark October 1 on your calendar for Compassion Sunday. Save the date and time of October 8th at 4.30 p.m. to celebrate the pastoral anniversary of Pastor James Beeney and the church anniversary of the Canaan Christian Church. This will be a 20th anniversary celebration and the service will be held at St. Stephen's Baptist Church in Temple Hills, Maryland. Bishop Kelsey is the guest preacher and our congregation, music ministry, and all leaders are invited to attend. Those with this week's announcements, please receive our worship leader. Our special emphasis for today, as you've heard in the infomercial, we're looking forward to our intercessory prayer summit on September 9th. Please be sure to register now for an anointed time of worship and praise with our guest, Bishop William Murphy. Amen, amen. Also, ladies, don't forget, September 24th, it's your Women's Day. Amen. All ladies are asked to be part of the choir. Please be on the lookout for rehearsal dates and time. Well, it's offering time. Please get out your smart devices and let's prepare to give. The options for giving are on the screen. I have learned that it is impossible to go wrong being a generous giver. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8 in the King James Version, Every man according to as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having su sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Let us pray. Eternal and all-wise God, we thank you for this time of worship and giving. We pray, O oh God, that you will sanctify it and receive it, and God, that you will multiply it. And God, we thank you for the purpose for which it has been given. In the name of the Lord Jesus is our prayer. Amen, amen, and amen.
It's preaching time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we have a preacher in the house. A native of South Carolina who has been in Maryland for 42 years. She is a graduate of the University of South Carolina where she received her undergrad BA degree in 1980. She pursued master's uh, graduate studies at Columbia University in New York and completed the Executive Management and Leadership Development Program with the U.S. Customs Service in 2003. She received her Ph.D. in January of 2023 in organiza Organizational Management. Dr. Woods currently serves at the New Samaritan Baptist Church as the executive director of the Office of the Senior Pastor and has held many other positions during her tenure at New Samaritan. She is a member of the Elders Council, the Ministerial Alliance, and the 4Rs Priority Team. She was licensed to preach the gospel in 1999 and ordained as an elder in 2005. She is married to the chairman of the deacon's minister, Robert M. Woods, and the proud mother of two sons, Stephen and Matthew, daughter-in-love, Rachel, and grandmother to two grandsons, Ethan and Everett. We just love her because she is ours, and we have seen the fruit of her gifts and labor. After the choir has come, please, right where you are, Receive Dr. Brenda Woods.
sons who are my heartbeats these days, to Bishop and Elder Kelsey, the Elders Council, the Ministerial Alliance, and all of you, I thank God and Bishop for affording me the opportunity to stand before you this morning to preach a word from the Lord. And there is a word from the Lord this morning. Glory to God. So let's go to the word right now. Our scripture reading is found in Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And the word of God says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 
Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to talk for just a little while this morning on the subject, God's in the midst of it all. God's in the midst of it all. Let us pray. God, decrease me right now and increase you in the eyes of these, your people, so that they have ears to hear what you have to say and hearts open to receive. This is my prayer, God, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Everything around us is changing. Seems as soon as we thought we were getting past the devastation of COVID-19 and the death of so many loved ones and the destruction it brought, we find ourselves right now and unprecedented wildfires raging everywhere, catastrophic flooding happening everywhere, droughts and heat waves, higher temperatures in the history of our nation. Hell, the size of grapefruits, they tell me, are falling in parts of the United States. Whales attacking ships, have you heard about it? I, for no reason. We even see seeing the sea lions attacking surfers on their surfboards. Sharks coming closer to land and attacking swimmers and shallow water on our beaches. Children getting growner and growner and disrespectful to their parents and adults. Nobody wanting to physically come to the house of the Lord anymore. Just becoming virtual members without investments. All kinds of crazy things are happening in the world, in the church and in our homes right now. It makes you say, what in the world is going on and what is this world coming to? Many say it's global warming and others say it's the end times. But I came this morning to tell you that no matter what time it is or what is going on around you or what you are even going through right now or what you're in the midst of, remember God's got it. God is in control, and he's in the midst of it all. In this journey of faith, we often face challenges, doubts, and trials that test the depths of our convictions. It is during these hard times that we need to do three things, and I want you to catch this. First thing we need to do is anchor our hearts in the unwavering love of God. Anchor our hearts in the unwavering love of God. Number two, we need to trust in his faithfulness. Trust in his faithfulness. And three, we need to persevere with steadfastness. Now more than ever, we need to know God is who he said he is and his promises are true. In this much-loved passage of scripture, Paul celebrates and tells us that God is always present and always willing to help us in our hour of need. That all things work together for the good, for those who love God. That if God is for us, it really doesn't matter who is against us. And that there is no power strong enough or circumstances dire enough to separate us from the love of God. Paul included this eighth chapter of Romans in his epistle to the Roman church. Here Paul is reminding both Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians that God is not like any human being or any ordinary person. He keeps his word. That is why this whole chapter is called a hymn of security. It is good to feel secure in some times and in some things. It means you don't have to worry about a thing because God's got it in control. But it is the part in verse 35 through 39 that says no power strong enough 
to separate us from the love of God. Nothing. That's what I want to remind somebody going through this morning and to let them know that our God is in the midst of it all. You are going to win. You are going to make it. Yes, you are. Guess what? You've already won because Jesus paid the price way back on Calvary. Then I also remember that the Bible is full of plagues and diseases and catastrophes and wayward and disobedient children from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelations. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Amen? Why? Because God has always been in the midst of it all. We've heard of the flood waters before. Just in, not just in this recent news. We all remember Noah and when he built the ark. So many people perished in those flood waters too. And the rain just did not seem to stop for days. We've seen Sodom and Gomorrah go up in flames, have we not? Cities and mass lands are burning everywhere from California to Canada. And even Greece is burning cities. These 90 degree plus days and wildfires we have been having recently, I'm here to tell you they won't last always. But my God says in Isaiah 43 and 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned. I just know those three Hebrew boys that were in the fiery furnace can give a testimony that God was in the midst of it all. We've seen a man in the book of Jonah who was swallowed by a whale in the ocean because of his disobedience. But he still came out to carry out the assignment that God had for him. We've seen in the Bible in Mark 4.39 that Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves when there was a storm out on the sea. And he said, peace be still. He was sleeping in the midst of it all on the boat. He was still with them. We are going to go through some storms in life. And we too have to have faith in God to speak to our storms and say it is going to get better. When we have spoken to our storms of life, the trials and tribulations, and said, in the name of Jesus, I speak to my mountain that I don't seem to overcome. I speak to the waters and say, peace be still. When is the last time that any of you just turned to the Lord and said, God, I thank you. God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy because it could have been another way. God, I thank you for your keeping power. I could have been homeless without food or even dead right now if it had not been for your being with me in the midst of it all. God, I love you in spite of what it looks like. God, I trust you. God, I trust your word. Be with me, God, in the midst of all of everything that's going on. When the doctor gives us a bad report, yet will I trust you. When things aren't going right, yet will I trust you. When my money's acting a little funny and short on every side, yet will I trust you. In the midst of it all, I will put my trust in you, God. I'm standing firm on what you said in your word, and I know you'll be with me. Yolanda Adams penned a song a few years back that said this, I've come through many hard trials, through temptations on every hand. Though Satan's tried to stop me and to place my feet on sinking sand, through the pain and all of my sorrows, through the tears and all of my fears, the Lord was there to keep me, for he kept me in the midst of it all. How do we know that God cares for us and that he's with us and that he's going to be in the midst of it all? How do we really, really know that God cares for us? Here's what he said in his word. In Isaiah 41 and 10, he says, So do not fear, 
for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then he said in Isaiah 26 and 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And then in John 16, 30 through, just one more. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Then we see in this verse 37 of Romans, it says, No, in all these things, we, you and I, are more than conquerors. We are overcomers in Christ Jesus. The love of God enables us to be more than conquerors, to rise above every adversity, because we already know that he said in his word, Lo, I will be with you. So if he's with you, who can be against you? Who can stand against you when you've got a God that we serve that's on your side? He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. I will never leave you nor forsake you. You got to keep pushing you got to keep pressing through it. Look at someone sitting beside you in your home or just type in the comment section. Push and press through it. I tell you, God's in the midst of your pushing and your pressing. But you got to hang in there. Even in the midst of everything that's going on around you, God wants you to know that he cares for you. Anybody believe this morning that God sincerely genuinely, authentically cares for you. People will say they care for you every day. They'll look you straight in your face and say, I care for you, I love you. Family and friends and loved ones will tell you that too. But I'm here to tell you that nobody cares for you like God does. He will be there when no one can be found. Anybody had sometimes when you're looking for family and your friends and they know where to be found? But in the midst of it all, God will be with you. So why do I stand here this morning trying to tell somebody that God cares about them? It's to keep telling you that in the midst of it all, God is going to work it out. He's going to be with you because we serve a God that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or even think. That's why I'm telling you God cares for you in the midst of it all. Some of you have survived sickness, <laughs> diseases, physical attacks on your body, accidents, people coming against you, demonic oppression, natural disasters, depression, anxiety, and all manner of evil. And have you not yet known that God has been in the midst of it all? That he's been keeping you while you thought you were just going through all by your little long lonesome self? God's been there. Everything may not be perfect, but the one thing that is for sure is that God protected you in the midst of it all. And the proof of that protection is that you are here today to tell somebody and to witness to somebody of how he brought you out, how he made it through and kept you in the midst of it all. No matter how hard the enemy tried, he couldn't kill you or destroy you. I think that's worth the praise right there. If God has done it, I think it's a praise right now. You have survived. Now it's time for you to thrive. Somebody needs to hear this. You survived. You survived so God can have you go and thrive. You're going to make it. Yes, you are. Why? Because you already have. When trials and tribulations rain down on you, make prayer an umbrella and know that in the midst of it all, God is with you. Life is not promised, men and women of God. Death-defining situations and illnesses are going to happen. The Bible speaks of such, but as Christians, we cannot live in fear. We have to believe and trust God with our life and the will he has for us. Pray for yourself. Pray for your kids. Pray for your family. Pray for your pastor. Anoint them with oil and then lead their lives in God's hands 
Why? Because he's in control. He's in the midst of it all. He knows your end and he knows your beginning. He knows your beginning and he knows your end. Amen? Amen, somebody. So I want you to know, God's words and promises come by the way we live our Christian life and how we continue to seek the knowledge and understanding of God. We got to get back to Bible studies. We got to get back in Sunday school. In your free time, I want you to read Psalm 91, and it talks about protection. But verse 7, I want you to focus on, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. That's a promise of God. Psalm 27 said, when I was afraid, I read the Psalms. See, many of you are not old enough or don't even remember the D.C. Sniper. I remember. Amen? Some of y'all don't even remember the swine flu and the bird flu, and you're all focused on COVID-19. We've had diseases and plagues long before COVID-19, and there were concerns and there were deaths in our family to remind us that God's protection and promises he has for us are still the same, no matter what the circumstances are. But you know what I did? I faced death. Many family members, many of you know that already, but what did I do? I said, God, yet will I trust you. And I continued with living for God because we serve a sovereign God. He's in the midst of it all. And I knew that if they died in Christ and I die in Christ, I'm going to see them again in that great getting up morning way up in the sky. New Samaritan, are you sick? and tired of fighting battles on your own? Well, this morning, I'm finished. I want to invite somebody to accept Jesus Christ. He will save you. He'll fight your battles. Guess what? A little revelation for you. When I say he'll fight your battles for you, he doesn't even need you to help him in fighting it because he's got it all on his own. Won't you try him today? A position at church is not a relationship with God. You can have a title, attend church regularly, and still not have a relationship with God. What I'm asking you this morning is do you know Jesus as your personal Savior and the pardoning of your sins? If you don't know Jesus Christ this morning and you'd like to get to know him just a little bit better, I invite you, if you're in the sanctuary, to meet me at the altar. Maybe you're there in your home, on vacation somewhere, and you're saying, Preacher, I still don't really, really, truly know Jesus for myself. I invite you right now, where you are, to go online NewSamaritan.org. I need you to go in there and say, I want to know more about Jesus. I want you to leave your contact information. And I promise you, somebody is going to get in touch with you. And they're going to make sure that you don't leave this day without the plan of salvation and knowing that you are saved. Amen. If you need a church home, I also want you to go online and let us know. I want to unite with New Samaritan Baptist Church. If that's you, go online right now. Leave us your name and your contact information and somebody will get in touch with you. Whatever the needs, you say, Preacher, I just need special prayer right now. I too want you to go online. Leave us your name and your phone number. Somebody from our intercessory prayer ministry or our ministerial alliance will be in touch with you. Amen? Amen. I just want you to know that Jesus is real and that he's in the midst of it all. And glory be to God, somebody, even wherever you are, just give Jesus right now and God a hallelujah praise. You be blessed in the Lord and never ever forget he's in the midst of it all. 
What a word we received from Elder Woods this morning. Hallelujah. God is in the midst of it all. For all of us who are truly blessed by this word, we want you to sow back into Elder Woods as she has poured into us. So get your smartphones, your devices out. The options for giving are on the screen. And let's be a blessing to our own Dr. Elder Brenda Woods. Amen. for the final blessing. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to pre present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. And let every heart say, Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Be safe and have a good and godly day. Thank you.